So when are you planning to settle down? Have you ever been asked this question before? Probably yes, and if you're lucky, not. But what exactly does it mean to settle down? Earn a particular degree, have a half decent secured job, irrespective of whether it makes you happy or it makes your life miserable, own a house, get married, have children. And if you've successfully accomplished all of this, then you are truly settled in life. And the faster you get there, the better. For most, this is the only way to live a fulfilled life. And whoever decided what it means to be settled, is there no other way to live your life? I'm Maria Victor, and in my mid-twenties, these were some of the questions I was asking myself. I was a qualified management accountant with a well-paying job that I aspired for. I owned a house, and I was traveling for work and leisure. So by the definition, I was quite on my way to being settled. However, despite this, there was this lack of fulfillment and you know, overall satisfaction. So in my little quest to find fulfillment and to break from the familiar and mundane, I started seeking new experiences. I enrolled for a jazz, funk and contemporary dance class. And even in those few moments that I was dancing, it was truly exhilarating and I felt completely alive. So one fine morning I woke up and I randomly decided to go for a trek. Now this was my first ever trek. So I teamed up with a bunch of people I had never met before. And soon we were off to the Sayadris. Now this was one hell of an adventure. Now that's me hanging on for my dear life. So how did I get there? As we were carefully traversing these narrow ridges, there was a point my hand couldn't reach out to the next crevice, you know, because of my height. So my friend who was leading the trek very calmly told me, just imagine a crevice and jump. Now, while I was fully aware of the consequences of missing an imagined crevice, I could not let my fears get the better of me. And at that moment, I came face to face with my fear of the unknown. And I took a leap of faith. So this experience made me fall in love with trekking as a way to unwind. And soon I found myself trekking to a tiny village in Nepal called Dampus. Now, as I approached the village, the stunning Annapurna range left me in awe. And I was sitting there absorbing these beautiful surroundings when a local calls out to me and says, Ma'am, come here, see shawls. He was selling some beautiful yak wool shawls, but I wasn't interested in buying anything, so I politely smiled. But he insisted, Ma'am, you don't have to buy, just come see. So I did. And as I approached him, he came up with this very unusual request. He said, ma'am, could you click my photograph? Now for me, this was unusual because it's usually tourists who walk up to locals and ask for pictures. So as I was clicking his photograph with my tiny point and shoot camera, he calls out to his wife and says, agar hum dunya nahi dekh sakte, to kya hua? Dunya to hume dekh sakti hai? Which means, if we can't see the world, at least let the world see us. So witnessing his outlook to life was a defining moment for me. And from then on, my travels became about finding such moments, which could be anywhere. So this is a picture of me in Nagaland. As we were ambling around clicking pictures, a bunch of ladies came up to me and they were very intrigued by what we were doing. So they showed me this picture of a famous personality in the local newspaper who resembled me. Now, while I tried to explain to them that I wasn't the person in the picture, we had a hearty time and we joked around and soon we were posing together for pictures. The senior most lady in the group comes up to me and she places her shawl around me. Now, this was a very touching moment for me as, you know, there was a warmth, a bond that was formed beyond any cultural or language barriers. And there was a kind of oneness that was formed that, that just can't be described in words. So how did these moments shape my life? In the Sayadris, my fear of the unknown turned into the thrill of the unknown. In Dampus, the shawl seller and his wife made me realize that if you're truly listening, life lessons could be learned from every person you meet. And amidst the busy markets in Nagaland, the local ladies made me realize that bonds could be formed despite our cultural differences. So it made me wonder, why should such life-altering experiences be left to chance? 
Could such experiences be curated for such moments to unfold on their own? It made me realize the ample opportunities the tourism industry has to offer, not just for travelers, but also for communities involved, to meet and interact with people of diverse backgrounds. It also made me think if I'm going to spend most of my day and subsequently most of my life working, then it should be for something I'm passionate about, something I really care about. So I thought, why not embrace this thrill of the unknown? There was no doubt I loved traveling. Travel for me was a part to self-discovery, to explore new ideas, new perspectives, and experience a different way of life with every person and every community I interacted with. So I decided to quit my job without really having a plan of what I wanted to do. I was solely driven by the intention to live life to the fullest and find my true self-expression. And thus began my entrepreneurial journey, from setting up a hobby travel club connecting like-minded travelers, to establishing an experiential travel company that specializes in localized and wholesome community experiences. Experience is the best teacher, and traveling is the best school you could go to. When you travel, you are more vulnerable. You step out of your comfort zone, meet new people, get new perspectives that can dissipate your own personal biases. With each new experience, you get in touch with your inner self, discover traits that you didn't know existed in you. You come to terms with your flaws and finally embrace who you really are. You can recreate your life at any given point. Be curious, explore, experience, express. You don't have to have it all figured out. Just be guided by your intuitions, invest in experiences, and rediscover yourself. So while I was steadily building my experiential travel company, one of my trips led me to Lahul Spiti Valley. Now my trip to Spiti Valley was life altering, not only because of the stunning Chandrata Lake, but also because that's where I met my husband, Murli Shankaran, who is now an equal partner in my entrepreneurial journey. So when I first met Murli in Spiti Valley, he was backpacking solo in the Himalayas on his motorbike. Now we both shared the zeal to learn and showcase India's rich heritage. And it wasn't long before we decided that we were meant for each other. So while we were exploring and connecting with communities in India, our very own home Goa, which we both grew up in, was changing. Goa's rich cultural heritage and the quintessential, easy-going lifestyle of the local communities was forgotten in this rush to capitalize on the sun, sand, and beer narrative. And we realized if this narrative had to change, travelers had to learn about the local culture from the locals themselves. So we set our base in Goa, and we took it upon ourselves to change the tourism landscape in Goa. Our experiences are curated to bring to life stories that are unheard of. Through vivid storytelling by our local host, we take you to history, architecture, legends, savor local delicacies, and experience the local way of life. We see tourism as a platform to nurture local talent from local artists, musicians, traditional occupations, and of course, passionate storytellers. This not only creates opportunities for livelihood for local communities, but also instills a sense of pride in the local culture and heritage, which would otherwise be neglected and lost forever. We encourage slow travel, which emphasizes on the connection between the traveler and the local community, versus manic sightseeing, which does not leave much time and space to assimilate the local culture. So coming back to the question, what does it mean to be settled? For me, it is when your heart settles on something and you truly go for it. My heart settled on making an impact in the world to curated travel experiences. I aim to change the face of travel, not only for travelers, but also for the communities involved. To explore new possibilities, to break from the familiar and mundane, and to rediscover yourself. So I came across this quote, if God is watching you all the time, the least you can do is be entertaining. Often in life, we settle for too little too soon. The possibilities are endless and waiting for us to explore. So go out there, take chances, be entertained, find your true self-expression and just make it happen.